What's up YouTube? Today's video is going to be about the top five differences between startup culture and big corporate culture. Nocturnal. All right guys, so you might have noticed that I have a little bit different of a video setup going on here. Uh, I'm trying out some new stuff. I got a microphone, I got some lighting, I got a new camera. So let me know what you guys think in the comment section of this video. Also, don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Anyway, guys, let's get started. First main difference, work culture, right? Startups typically gonna be a lot more chill, right? The first thing I noticed at my startup uh, that I currently work for, that I uh, have been working for for almost three years now, which is the longest I've ever been employed by a company, was the dress code, right? Dress code is lawless. Basically, you can wear whatever the fuck you want. I showed up to my interview and people were wearing shorts and flip flops, dude. And I'm in like a shirt and a tie and all that interview bullshit. And I was like, dude, this place seems awesome, right? What's even cooler is that everyone at a startup is typically smart as fuck, right? Like we have people that went to Harvard at my startup. We have people who went to a bunch of Ivy League schools, really just smart and driven people. And you know, they show up to work in a t-shirt and shorts. My CEO wears a t-shirt to work every single fucking day. That's pretty cool. Uh, the difference with uh, big culture, or big uh, corporations or companies is that the work environment's not as relaxed. Like your work culture is gonna be a lot more structured. It's gonna be a lot more professional. And you know, you can't do things like say shit and fuck at work. Whereas at startups, nobody gives a shit. Um, or that's how, at least how it is at mine. And you know, everything is just gonna be more square, right? Like you gotta dress up every day. You're probably not gonna get to work from home as much. Like the work culture is just more stiff at big companies. So if you guys like the more relaxed vibe, startups for you. If not, you like, you know, I'm not saying it's a bad thing. If you like more structure and you like more professionalism, like the uh, corporate life might be for you. Number two, uh, work-life balance. It kind of feeds into this. Like startups are going to provide a much better work-life balance in my opinion, right? That's what I've experienced working for both startups and big companies. So uh, one example of that is startups are a lot more lenient with PTO and with working from home, right? So at my job, I have something called unlimited PTO. And people are like, all right, dude, what the fuck is unlimited PTO? Why don't you ever just not go to work ever, right? There's obviously some unwritten rules about it. Like you're only supposed to take four to five weeks of PTO. But the awesome thing is I don't have to track that and I don't have a set amount. Like I can choose how much PTO I wanna take every year, right? It's totally up to me. And as long as I don't cross that line of like two months of PTO, which might even be okay, but I've never tried that, um, nobody's gonna care, right? At big companies, you get a certain amount of hours of PTO every month and you can only use up those hours, right? So like, say you have 12 hours of PTO and you wanna take a, a week long vacation, you can't do that because you only have 12 hours of PTO. And it just, uh, it's a lot more structured in the way that uh, PTO is, you know, done. And I personally like the startup way because I don't have to keep track of it and it's like unlimited, right? Um, also working from home, like this obviously depends on your job, but me as a software developer, I get to work from home a lot, right? Obviously during COVID, I'm working from home full time, but I was working from home at least two days a week when we were, uh, when we were back in our offices. And I also kind of get to show up whenever the hell I want, as long as it's like at a reasonable time, but I wouldn't show up to work until like 10:30, man. And like, I know that at big corporate companies, that's not going to happen, right? you're just not allowed to show up at 10.30. You oftentimes have to get in at like between eight and nine. And if you don't, you start getting in trouble, right? Nobody asks me any questions or gives me any shit as long as I get my work done and I'm not showing up at like noon every day. You know what I mean? So working from home, when you get to show up from work to work is a lot more laid back at startups. And you know, at big corporate companies, you're not gonna get that sort of leniency there. Number three, structure in the workplace, right? So obviously startups are going to have much less structure than big companies. What do I mean by structure? I mean like the processes and the procedures that go around like getting work done, right? So I just get assigned something and it's basically like homework, right? They're just like, hey man, you gotta do this. Here's a list of things it needs to do. Just get it done in two weeks, okay? Or however long I get to do it. And I just get to do it, right? 
I don't have to go through a bunch of bullshit processes. I don't have to, you know, go through a bunch of different people when I'm getting work done. I just get work, I get to do it, I get to do it on my own time and there's no strings attached really, right? This has a downside which we'll get into in a second, but corporate companies are basically the opposite, right? There's a ton of structure in, in place, sometimes too much, right? The benefit of that before we get into the drawbacks of this point is that, you know, uh, things flow much easier, right? So like if something goes wrong in the middle of a work stream or if there's a change that needs to happen, there's processes and procedures to make that happen that things have to go through so that you don't end up wasting your time developing things because something that gets really annoying is when you spend a bunch of time building something like a feature and then, you know, a uh, product comes back to you and is like, yo, uh, we don't need this anymore. And I'm like, well, shit, dude, I just spent four hours building that and I wish you would have told me that sooner. Um, that doesn't really happen at big companies, like, or it just happens less really, right? Because there's more structure. So the benefit of more structure is that, you know, there's less miscommunication and there's less um, work that gets done that gets wasted, right? Where that happens all the time at startups. And uh, the drawback of the uh, formal processes and all that structure is that it can get annoying when you just want to get your shit done. And it also takes a lot of time to uh, develop those processes even though they'll probably already be developed when you're stepping into them. But you know, sometimes it just creates a lot of fluff and a lot of unnecessary effort on your part. But both things have their drawbacks, both things have their benefits. So it uh, depends on what you guys like. If you like uh, you know, less structure and you like just like being able to get your work done, startup's the place for you. If you like more structure, uh, big companies might be the place for you. Number four, compensation. Uh, startups typically pay less than big companies, right? So. This can be compensated with, with stock options within the company. Like for example, I took less money to work at a startup for a better work-life balance and got some stock options. It ended up paying off because my company just got bought out for 250 million fucking dollars. So I get a nice payday from that, but that wasn't guaranteed, right? Big companies, um, you're gonna oftentimes get more money because they have more money to give. Like a startup with you know $10 million worth of funding versus a big company like Uber that's worth billions of dollars, right? Or I don't know their exact net worth, but you get it. It can afford to pay you more money, but oftentimes it does come at the expense of your work-life balance. And I personally prefer work-life balance over um, money, right? As long as I'm getting paid enough, right? But for example, guys, I took a job for about 30% less pay at my startup um, than to go work for some, you know, big sort of government contracting company as an iOS developer. And I did it because I could tell I was going to be much happier at HomeSnap. And that little bit of extra money I would have gotten every paycheck wouldn't have mattered if I was fucking miserable, which it looked like I would have been at this fucking company, right? Like these people told me I wasn't even allowed to eat lunch at my desk. I don't know what the fuck. They said no working from home. You only get 10 days of PTO and then the company I currently work for was the complete opposite and I took less money and the stock options to make up for that less, uh, the, 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 the sacrifice and compensation and then it ended up paying off. But that doesn't happen all the time, however, you know? So the benefit of working for a big company, you often get paid more money, which leads to a higher steady paycheck. There's less risk involved, right? Also, startups aren't always guaranteed to work out. Like startups fail all the time. Right? And you, you might be out of a job, but when they do succeed and when you do have options in the company, it can give you a huge payday, right? Um, and I didn't get a huge payday, but I definitely just got a nice chunk of change in my pocket for my company getting sold and I'm pretty fucking happy about it. All right, last but not least, career advancement, number five, right? So I can guarantee that you guys will learn more working at a startup than you do at a big company. And it's pretty simple. Like I heard this analogy once where um, this kid had a dream of working for Ford, right? And I, this is just a story, it's not really an analogy. And he got a job at Ford and he was all excited, but dude, then he got put in charge of making fucking door handles. Door handles, bro, door handles. He thought he was gonna be engineering the next awesome Mustang or Shelby GT350 or race cars. He was making fucking door handles, dude. What's the point here? The point is at big companies, you all, they're so compartmentalized, right? That you only get to work on little pieces of the company. Like, whereas with startups, there's so much less people and they're in such a different phase than most big companies are 
that you get to work on things like almost from the ground up, right? So you're gonna learn a hell of a lot more doing that because you're gonna be involved in so many different things in the company, right? So me as a developer, I get put in charge of building entire features by myself. Whereas if I work somewhere like Uber, where they have like 80 to 100 iOS engineers, uh, you there's like 10 people that get put on one feature, right? And then you're all working together and you might have different coding styles and like all this shit, like there's just more chance for clashing with people, right? And you don't get to learn as much. Like when I build that feature by myself, I learn a shitload. Whereas if I just got to build one little piece of one little feature, I wouldn't be learning as much, right? So working for the startup guys, in my opinion, is a much better option here, but it does come with some risk. Like to get back to this point of career advancement, you're gonna learn way more at the startup and it's gonna be way better for your career in the long run. You can take the knowledge you get at a startup and start your own company. You can then also go to a big corporate company with much more knowledge. Like I feel like I'm a significantly better coder now that I worked for a startup. And that doesn't just apply to developers, right? That could be anything. It could be like mechanical engineers. It could be product teams. It could be like, building your skills as a manager, it doesn't matter. You learn more at startups because they're growing, right? The work you do matters a lot at a startup and you're gonna get put in charge of a lot more work at a startup than you are at a big corporate company. So that's gonna be it for this video, guys. Um, personally, I prefer startups 100% of the way, right? Uh, or 100% of the time. And you know, I hope this video helped you guys figure out what might be a better option for you to work at. As long as you have a job and you're getting paid, hey man, life's good. But if you can work for a startup, I highly recommend it. Anyway guys, make sure you mash that like button, comment on this video, subscribe to my channel. Let me know what you guys think about the new setup and let me know what kind of videos you guys wanna see from me in the future. So thanks for watching this one guys, peace.